You know, when you reflect on this fight, it's funny because I can hear the Canelo fan base Rainbow Coalition talking about how a prime Canelo would have beat a Floyd Mayweather. If Floyd Mayweather fought Canelo now, he wouldn't have a chance. The reality is Canelo got beat by a guy with only 19 fights in his prime. Canelo is in his prime right now. He is in his prime and that's what happened to him. When he picked somebody who did not have the veteran experience that Canelo has. And Canelo has a boatload of high level fight experience over Demetrius Bivol. But yet and still, in his prime, he took that kind of loss. And Demetrius Bivol was able to strip Canelo completely naked. And through that fight, you've seen everything stylistic-wise, technical-wise. You've seen everything that was wrong with Canelo Alvarez. And in that fight, you was able to figure out why he avoided certain people. That's the beautiful thing about what De Demetrius Bevel did to uh, Canelo Alvarez. He was able to show you all of Canelo's flaws. And the whole world seen it. Even casual fans synced it. That's how blatant and obvious it was. Okay? You seen how limited Canelo really was. And a lot of you were shocked because you wasn't able to see it until what? He took on some halfway decent competition at the end of the day keep in mind Demetrius Bivol is not the most high level fighter in the world his basics was good enough and that's why they always reiterate the fundamentals because the fundamentals will save you you know but his basic fundamentals beat Canelo Alvarez okay outclassed them completely and this is where you gotta look at the so called Eddie Reynoso trainer of the year is the guy really trainer of the year with all those guys failing drug tests and not only that how could he be trainer of the year and how could canelo alvarez have ever been pound for pound number one when you just watch the so-called pound for pound number one fighter get into a boxing match with a guy with only 19 fights and he wasn't able to adjust let me say that again the so-called pound-for-pound fighter, okay, got in there with a boxer who did not have a whole lot of high-level boxing experience, okay, not at all. He got in there with that kind of person and was not able to adjust. Good fighters, great fighters can adjust in time. Canelo Alvarez couldn't do that. After he figured out that trying to walk him down shit and close the gap with leaping hooks and over right hands, as soon as he figured out that shit wasn't working, his veteran, his pound for pound, his one of the greatest fighters of all time, greatest Mexican of all time skill set should have kicked in, but it didn't. You want to know why? Because Canelo Alvarez has been carefully selecting the right opponents while making it look like he's taking on some kind of stiff competition okay i have to admit the the hype job that they did on canelo was great because the way that they picked his opponents how they picked his opponents at what time they picked his opponents and how he went about doing it it puts everybody to sleep if you're not paying a fucking attention and this is what some canelo alvarez fanboys do not understand some people just woke the fuck up some for you some of you are willingly sleep, okay? And some of you are sleeping, don't even fucking know it. But the beautiful thing is, on that night, you were able to see what everybody was talking about, what everybody, what everybody was able to see, and why everybody say what they say about Canelo Alvarez at the end of the day. And nobody can deny it. You want to know one of the reasons why you know they can't deny it? Out of all this Canelo videos and all this and whatever and whatnot. Let me ask you a question because I ain't seen they ass at all. Have you seen these gun ho 
Canelo Alvarez fans, the same fans that jump on any fucking video that they seen titled Canelo Alvarez. And if it doesn't go along with their uh, Mexican narrative, they over there thumbing down your video and intoxicating your comment section. Have any of you guys seen them? I haven't seen them at all. They're quiet as a church mouse. You can't find them nowhere. Where did they go? These guys must have ran into the hole. Or maybe they licking their wounds on these butt kisser Canelo Alvarez fan pages. Maybe that's where they over there licking their wounds. But usually, you can't keep these dogs inside their own backyard. They always traveling all over the world of YouTube, jumping on everybody's page, talking their shit. While I was doing videos about Terrence Bud Crawford and uh, Errol Spence, do you know that Canelo Alvarez fans were still showing up in those videos complaining about something that was said about Canelo Alvarez when the only thing that was said about Canelo Alvarez in those videos, all I literally said was PBC offered Canelo Alvarez a fight for $55 million. I, I haven't even said he ducked. I haven't even said anything. That's all I did was describe the situation. Which is factual. They did send them over a contract for $55 million. But I've been said in my videos, let's not pay attention to Canelo. What Canelo's doing is not important. This undisputed fight with these two welterweights is what's important. That's what I said. And yet they still find a way to complain and say somebody was hating on Canelo Alvarez when the video was clearly about Errol Spence and Terrence Bud fucking Crawford. At the end of the day, this is the thing. Boxing fans are just not annoyed with Canelo Alvarez. More and more people every day do not like his fucking fan base. Nobody wants y'all around yet. People don't want y'all on their pages. People can't break down fights. People can't have an opinion. And apparently, people can't even describe a situation that pertains Canelo's name and nothing derogatory without these fans getting in their fucking feelings and this is exactly why they are as quiet as they are today because you know what no amount of racism can hide the fact the way that boy got his ass whooped no amount of racism can hide the fact that Canelo's supposed to be a, an elite fighter he got in there with somebody with only 19 fights and couldn't make adjustments no amount of uh, Mexican flag posting is going to change that Okay, you could do that shit all you want. At the end of the day, you saw his flaws along with the rest of the world, along with the rest of the boxing world. And, and you know what? One of the worstest thing is that whole aura of Canelo Alvarez, Invincible, and all that other shit. Hell, you got fighters even having a little hope when they get on the scorecards, even though they still tried to fuck him over. But people now see how you can beat the fuck out of Canelo Alvarez. Canelo ain't got no feet. He can't move and he can't handle nobody with a jab. Anybody that's mobile and hostile and got a good jab, Canelo gonna have fucking problems. Because Canelo is slow. The dude is slow. That high level of plays and could not cut off the ring. How is that possible? But that's the so-called pound for pound fighter, right? Never was never was canelo is what boxing needed because boxing was dying without without canelo there ain't no fucking real stars boxing needs a canelo i understand why canelo exists okay because without a canelo boxing would be suffering hella hard it's true i understand the purpose of a fucking canelo i do but at the end of the day just the way he moved with two curry chicken at the end of the day. And people are tired of Canelo. And people are tired of his delusional ass fans. And people are also tired of the boxing world targeting and try to market and try to please his fucking fans when they're bad for fucking boxing. Hell, they're even bad for fucking Canelo. Even Canelo got booed by his own fucking fan base. So who the fuck is safe at the end of the damn day? They don't do nothing but cause confusion. They're nothing but a problem. They don't know the sport. They, they just walk around talking racist shit all, all the damn time. And you know what? They just flat out fucking annoying. Nobody cares about their opinion because their opinion is majority of the time is always biased. 
I almost can never trust an opinion from a Latino boxing fan because it's always fucking biased. It's always pro Canelo. It's always, look, and they don't even got to be Mexican. I done seen Puerto Ricans take up this position and that's fucking disgraceful. But I'm going to digress. Just because we have this Latin connection, that makes you ineligible to have an intelligent boxing conversation with somebody who's a fan of the sport because you too goddamn tribal to understand opinions and fucking facts. And that's a fact at the end of the day. But the question you have to ask yourself is, how does this so-called elite fighter and, and this is why Canelo never can't be no all-time great or, or, or let alone one of the greatest Mexicans of all times. Canelo is not a better fighter than Oscar De La Hoya. Oscar De La Hoya is leagues ahead of Canelo Alvarez. Both in skill set and mind. Oscar De La Hoya really fought good people. Oscar De La Hoya wasn't no fucking ducker. Oscar De La Hoya could really fucking scrap. Oscar De La Hoya will fight anybody. That's not Canelo Alvarez. So how you gonna be the king over all this when you ain't even the king in your own fucking backyard? And you can't even get your own damn people to stay loyal to your ass. They loyal to Canelo by default. The second Canelo lose or the second Canelo can't deliver on something, they see Canelo in his white skin. And he's no longer Mexican. I've noticed that. I've noticed that shit happen to Canelo. The second he can't perform or deliver how his fan base thinks so, all that Mexican shit go out the fucking window. And they just see that red hair and that pale skin. And he a white boy then. When he winning, he all Mexican, he all this, he's our champion, he's this and he's that. You, you know that by how quick they're easy to drop their so-called fellow Mexican and adopt somebody else who's not even from that culture or heritage. That's how fake they is, but that's all I got for now. I'm out.